Welcome to Piscataquis Community Secondary School, where tonight we got a Class C boys matchup between the Central Red Devils and the PCHS Pirates. My name is Chris Lesner. I'm joined by Mark Kalman, who's going to be doing the color commentary and the producing. Emma Kalman is doing the camera work. Mark, we're getting down to crunch time in the regular season. These two teams are both looking for a prelim spot. They, they certainly are, Chris. And, uh, you know, PCHS, they're in good shape. But they need this win to keep themselves in good shape. They're 12, 13, make it. They're, they're, they're trying to get, you know, as much up there as far as you can. You want to get the best matchup as possible. Um, you know, tw like 12 would play 5, you know, 13 play 4. You want to get up to 10, 11, get a little bit better matchup, um, you know, a, a chance to win. You know, you get, get on the floor, get that extra game, you got the chance. But you, you want to, you know, get the best seed possible. And for um, Central... Right now, they're not in great shape, but they got plenty of games left. They got four games left. You win three out of four of those, and then see see where you end up. And you know maybe they can get enough heel points to get into the tournament. Yeah, and that's all you want to do is get into the field and get into that prelim matchup that could eventually lead you to go into Bangor. This is the Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union pregame show. Uh, these two teams matched up in Corinth the other night on Wednesday, Mark, and Central ended up coming up with an 11-point win in that one. Yeah, and um, you know, not a uh, you know PCHS struggled that night, and Central took advantage and got a big win. Uh, Central is a tough place to play, and when you don't you know go in there and play your best game, they're going to take advantage. They've got some talented players do the do the Red Devils um, as a as opposed to um, and which we'll talk about in a minute. But if you want to talk a little bit about some of the Central players first, yeah, Central uh, mostly been been led. Their big senior leader has been uh, Lucas Gustin. Um, he's he's big been been big down low for them this year. Um, he's always good in the post. And uh, Colby Bean, a so just a sophomore, has also been uh, uh, a player Central's been able to rely on this year. And uh, these two teams are also coming off a, a loss. Um, they both played on Saturday as well, where PCHS uh, lost to uh, Dexter and a game you saw on East Main Sports Media, and uh, Central lost to Stern. So both these teams are coming off a loss trying to bounce back tonight. Yeah, that game Friday night you saw here, that was a big night. Eliza Jean Family Cancer Foundation, a lot of money was raised. Um, the games didn't turn out great for PCHS, but the night did as they uh, you know, got the big night earning a lot of money for a good cause. Um, but for the PCHS side, they're led by uh, Scott Chadbone and Brady Gaw. Scott Chadbourne's a junior, Brady Gaw is a freshman, and they both average a lot of points. What Coach Noyes needs is a third person to step up. You get those two, you know, getting their 15, 20 points like they usually do, but you need another person to get 8, 10 points, and, you know, even 6, 6 to 10 points to help balance that out because, you know, other teams know who they need to stop, and they're tough to stop, but, you know, you need that third per third uh, production from another person to um, – you know, help them win some games. They showed how capable the, capable they are of winning games when they beat the Academy. The Academy's in the top five right now in Class C, and they got a big win. They scored 68 points. They got plenty of help that night. They don't, not only had Chad Bond and God, they had other players too, and that's what they need to get some big wins down the stretch. We will also have PCHS Thursday, another big one at Dexter. Yeah, and I mentioned the PCHS Dexter game, the boys game. The other night, when you get my age, I guess those days all mixed together. I said Saturday, but that was actually Friday, but... Um, Jackson Pollock, too, and Hayden Stroud are two sophomores that have also contributed a lot to the Red Devils. We'll have a lot more on the pregame show, Maine Highlands Federal pregame show. We're going to go ahead and take a break right now. We'll be right back with you. Sluggers Baseball and Softball Training offers a variety of classes and leagues to expose you to a wider view of the game. Sluggers leads the way in baseball and softball training with industry-leading technology such as hit tracks that combines a traditional batting cage experience with modern analytics, all from the virtual diamond of your favorite ballpark. Check out Sluggers today on Facebook, schedule online, or call 207-951-2250 to start your journey with the best training staff around. Excellence starts at Sluggers. We are the NFHS. That stands for the National Federation of State High School Associations. But really, what we stand for, together with the MPA, are the 49,000 high school sports and performing arts students in Maine. And so we stand. We stand for the runners, debate team members, and basketball players. We stand for their coaches, officials, and adjudicators. We stand for the drummers, football players, and actors. We stand for the golfers, singers, and swimmers. 
We stand as the national leader and advocate for these essential activities and all who participate in them and make them possible because it is our purpose to ensure that high school students get to play, perform, and compete together. To learn more about who we are and what we stand for, visit nfhs.org. to Rouse Garage in Dover Foxtrot to discover the difference between walking into a local dealership versus a big dealer that uses high pressure tactics the second you drive onto the lot. From selling you a vehicle to servicing your vehicle, Riles Garage will treat you like you are the only customer. While you're there, check out their state-of-the-art automatic car wash. Riles Garage, call them at 207-564-3434 or visit them at 191 East Main Street in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. Brothers Meats is a family-owned and operated business located in Guilford, Maine. We operate a local retail meat market along with a slaughterhouse, smokehouse, and processing plants. Heron Brothers has all sorts of meats from already pre-cut all the way to cutting it right on the spot for you. Also, while you're there, don't forget to try their wicked good beef jerky that is made right in Guilford, Maine. Call them at 207-876-4395 or visit them at 346 Water Street Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Go and stop by Kimball Insurance for all your insurance needs. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or health insurance, we have you covered. Our agents are ready to serve you and help you with your needs. Visit us at Kimball Insurance at 91 Main Street in Sangerville, Maine, online at KimballInsuranceAgency.com, or visit us on Facebook to see what we can do for you. Kimball's, your insurance is our business. Welcome back to Piscataquis Community Secondary School, where Class C boys match up tonight between Central and PCHS. You saw some of our great sponsors. I'll tell you about a few more. Black Bear Crane is a family-owned and operated crane and rigging service provider located in Herman, covering the state of Maine with cranes from 27 to 240 tons. From roof trusses, HVAC units, steel and precast direction, to modular home and communications equipment, call 877-BEAR today. If you need a vehicle, contact Sonny, Brian, Sean, or Ryan at Hartley's. Easy finance and available, and a great selection of new and used. Call 207-368-5751. Maine Mapping Company provides all your land surveying and mapping needs throughout the state of Maine. Centrally located in Dexter. Maine Mapping provides boundary, topographic, and aerial surveys, as well as construction survey services statewide. Visit us at www.mainmappingco.com or check out our Facebook page to get more information or request a quote. So thank you to all those sponsors. And uh, those sponsors, uh, if you'd like to sponsor as well, to become a sponsor, you can contact Mark at EasternMainSports at gmail.com. And uh, Mark, again, we're getting ready here for some action here at PCHS. And... Uh, only just over two weeks till we hit tournament time. Yeah, and I do want to mention something else, Chris. Uh, we kind of, as you know, if you watch Friday night, we didn't have our normal equipment. We do have it back. We have a new equipment, but we don't. We weren't able to get all the sponsors on. So I want also want to thank thank Ames Chiropractic, and um, as Chris mentioned, it's the Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union pregame show. We did have the we do have the other ads on there. So I do want to mention that and uh, thank you to all of our sponsors. And Chris mentioned about sponsoring. We got a tournament coming up. We've got a great deal. Um, for if you want to, we're going to bro um, broadcast audio for the first time at the tournament. Some teams, these two schools are among those teams. If if they have any games that we will broadcast, um, so if you want to sponsor, definitely as Chris said, contact me and we can get you set up. It's a it's going to be great. We're, we're going to be there for every game. We're not going to broadcast every game, but we're going to be there for every game like we always have been. So uh, just you know, contact me and if, if you are from outside this area and want to get your team you know covered, you know. Uh, be a sponsor, and we'll cover the, that school's uh, tournament game during the tournament. But, yeah, so just a little bit um, over two weeks. Two weeks from Friday, we'll be there. Um, Class B uh, quarterfinals will open things up like they always do. There are changes in the schedule beyond that. Class C, I talked to some coaches. They're, they're very happy that they're not going to be playing two, two nights in a row. Unless it's snow, and they understand that. That changes things. But uh, their schedule, they won't play the semifinals and the regional finals on back-to-back -back days. So that's a that's a big thing. That's the biggest change, I think, of the tournament. There's some other little changes. Um, Class B regional finals will be Friday night. Um, and Class D and C regional finals will be Saturday. But looking forward to it as always, Chris. Yeah, it's always fun. And uh, 
One thing I just want to emphasize, too, is that those will be audio broadcasts. We won't be able to provide the video to you, but our video ads will, will still pop up during those audio broadcasts. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we we just looking forward to it so much and, uh, you know, looking forward to bringing it to you. So, um, And th these teams hope to be there. And, and you know, they're going to have a lot of work to do. Um, you know, Central's going to need a good end of the season to make a prelim game. PCHS has to win a couple games. They're right now they're in there, but they, they need to still, you know, finish out strong, and this is a big game for them. Yeah, this just definitely shows the importance for both teams of this game here tonight. And uh, teams are on the floor warming up. We're about four minutes away. And uh, another thing that's going to happen tonight in the girls' game is the same two schools will play on the girls' side right here on Eastern Maine Sports Media is uh, it's going to be senior recognition night for the for the PCHS Pirates. Yeah, definitely. We'll talk a little bit about that now. We, we will jump into that after this game, but um, it'll be a shorter pregame with these doubleheaders. Sometimes it's the second game because it's a shorter pregame show because we, we wrap things up with a uh, postgame show and it, we jump right in. But it will be senior night. The seniors that will be recognized for PCHS are Kendall Kimball, uh, Abby Ricca, Briley Ricca, uh, Caitlin White, Uh, Maria Belma. So th those are the seniors for the uh, the Pirates, and uh, you know uh, that's it's always a big night on Senior Night, and they will get recognized tonight. Give flowers to the parents, and that's why they're the second game, uh, most likely, so to get that, so the parents can make it here for the uh, Senior Night presentation. But um, so looking forward to it. Should be a good night. Um, obviously, um, we have Central. We've had both these uh, teams on. Um, a couple, you know, a few times. Um, the Central girls, led by Izzy Allen, one of the most dynamic players in, um, you know, in the area. Um, you know, she put, got her thousands points not that long ago. Uh, put up, I guess, Penquist, uh, Chris. She got 39, uh, 35 points and nine three pointers. So, and she didn't play the, she didn't play the fourth quarter. So, um, you know, that um, that's quite a performance, and she can light it up, um, as we know. PCHS knows they have the hands full, but they do play much better here. Um, so, you know, we'll see what happens there uh, in that one um, tonight. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, a lot of people focus on Izzy, but we have to talk about her sister, Mary Allen, who's just a freshman, who's made an uh, immediate impact on that Red Devils team as well, Mark. Oh, yeah, and, and I think mainly with her, I think, um, you know, she's dynamic offensively, but um, her defense has changed the way this team's looked at. I think going into the going into tournament play, they're much more of a threat than they have than they were last year or the year before. Well, last year, the year before they didn't have a tournament. But <laughs> last year because of her defense. And, um, you know, it, it, teams can't focus so much on Izzy on the offensive side, too. And also they get Riley Speed, who's who's um, very good defensively, too. And also last year you got matched up, you know, Central got matched up with a team like Hodgson, and we obviously know what that team's done. So Well, yeah, and they're top two, yeah. <laughs> you know, as is, uh, you know, Dexter and Penobscot Valley and uh, Matt, Matt Knock. You get to the tournament, yeah. it's, you, yeah. <laughs> you're going to deserve to be there. Yeah, so. yeah it's going to be a, a great, we just mentioned the five teams. I think that most te most people think um, could beat anybody, any one of the other ones on any given night. So it should be fun. It's all about matchups, and, uh, you know, we'll be there for it, for it all. Yeah, we're just winding down the Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union pregame show. We'll go to a quick commercial, come right back with starting lineups and get action going here at PCHI. Brothers Meats is a family-owned and operated business located in Guilford, Maine. We operate a local retail meat market along with a slaughterhouse, smokehouse, and processing plants. Herring Brothers has all sorts of meats from already pre-cut all the way to cutting it right on the spot for you. Also, while you're there, don't forget to try their wicked good beef jerky that is made right in Guilford, Maine. Call them at 207-876-4395 or visit them at 346 Water Street Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. We're back with you here at PCHS and we're uh, about to get the uh, starting lineups going here tonight, Mark. And um, again, big game for both teams and uh, should be some exciting action here tonight. Certainly, and we'll take it over to, uh, I believe, a AD uh, Andy Shirley is going to do the announcements. We'll take it over to him, and we'll have the uh, national anthem after that, and we'll be ready for a doubleheader tonight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Piscataquis Community Secondary School for tonight's game between the Central Red Devils and your PCHS Pirates. Feel free to visit the concession stand, but afterwards, please make sure you throw away your garbage and recycle your bottles. These athletes seek your positive support and encouragement throughout tonight's contest. Unsportsmanlike behavior in any way by players, fans, or coaches only hurts the students. 
cheer for your team rather than against the opponents or officials. Let the players play, let the officials officiate, and enjoy tonight's game. And now for the starting lineups. For the visiting Red Devils, at forward, number four, Lucas Gustin. At guard, number five, Jackson Paul. At guard, number 11, Ro Raul Willis. At guard, number 12, Aiden Stroud. And at forward, number 24, Kobe Dean. The Red Devils are coached by Quincy Lancaster. And now for your PCHS Pirates. At guard, number two, Brady Gall. At guard, number 12, Ben Higgins. At forward, number 10, Dawson Simpson. At forward, number 11, Todd Gall. And at forward, number 34, Scott Chapel. Pirates head coach is Mitchell Miller, he is assisted by Damian Drew. The official officials for tonight's game are Mr. Long Dagger, Mr. Dave Anderson, and Mr. Lance Pat. Would you now please rise and remove your hat for the final of our national game? So we'll get the uh, lineups and the national anthem. We're ready to go. We'll read down those starting lineups for you again in case you missed them. Central's got uh, Lucas Gustin, Jackson Pollock, Rowan Willis, Colby Bean, and Hayden Strout are their starters. And for the Pirates? PCHS has Brady Gaw, Dawson Simpson, Ty Carr, Ben Higgins, and Scott Chadbourne. And it's going to be Gaw and Bean jumping it up here to get going. Good crowd on the on the uh, PCHS side tonight here, Mark. Yeah, uh, nothing compared to the other night, but I don't think they'll have another crowd like that for another till next year. <laughs> That's a, that was a big one. Be thrown out of bounds here by Central on that first possession. That was Hayden Strout. The, uh, the Pirates got it. Benefit of kind of having a double header. Um, you get on a busy night in high school basketball, you get three refs and three yeah. good ones too. Absolutely. It's a little surprising we have three officials with so many games going on tonight. I think you said there was 50 games or so scheduled throughout the state. As I said, you get, get two games. You're going to want to be fresh. Go with it. Gaw's a dynamic uh, player. He, he makes a lot of things happen nice like that. Pass. Underneath the basket there for the layup by ben, ben Higgins. An assist by Gaw. Nice play there. Pirates with the first basket. For the top, Rowland Willis with it. Over to Pollock, he goes in the lane. And what are they gonna call? Foul here on the Pirates. Gonna get two shots here for Hayden Strout. Yeah, we can't see the um, scoreboard with the fouls, but they do have the fouls up there, which that one is on Brady Gaw. So we kinda have to see that. We won't have the number of fouls necessarily, but we know that's the team's first. Kind of make note of them as I go, if I can remember. Again, difficult where the scoreboard is up behind us, where we're set up here in Guilford. Uh, we could have seven bleachers, but we wouldn't have these comfortable chairs. <laughs> no, we wouldn't. We wouldn't. <laughs> no. Two foul shots there by Pollock. Tie it up. From Scott Chadboard and the Pirates. Yeah, 
Yeah, so we notice a lot of things go through Gar and Chad one for this team. Kind of playing pass there between Gar and Chadbourne. Back to Gar. Right there by Pollock. Gar's shot is good. Back to Gar. Right there by An assist and two points early here for Brady Gar. And we're going to have another foul on the Pirates. And I think they're going to get Gar on that one. No, it's Higgins. Higgins, okay. It's two fouls on the Pirates and two more free throws for Pollock. Perfect three for three so far. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I think you created a jinx there. Yeah, could have. Oh, I didn't. When you're that good, you don't, it doesn't matter what we say. <laughs> four for four for the line for Pollock early on. Four to four. Just over a minute and a half in here to the first quarter. Double header night here in Guilford. Red Devils and Pirates. Rebound there by Gustin. Here come the Red Devils. Chance to get their first lead here early on. The Pirates are playing man-to-man -man here. Gustin, he's been a senior leader for them. Over the last several seasons, he's uh, been one of their instrumental pieces. And the lane there, we're going to have to travel. Yeah, Central made a nice run last year, and uh, Gustin was right in the middle of that. Obviously, they had um, you know the big gun, Simon Allen and, uh, and Bryce Burns, but he was in the mix, too. Um, big shots at the cross center. Yep, again, he was, he's been an instrumental piece of this team even this year. He's, um, he's been one of their leaders, for sure. He's a senior. Pirates back to their offense here. Brady Gaw, shot up. Good, nice shot there. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely not one you can leave open because he'll take advantage, and he has tonight. Brady Gaw with four early points here, six to four Pirates. Pollock with it. Wants to go down the lane, he's cut off. Gets it to Hayden Strout. Strout trying to go on Chadbourne. Chadbourne says, no, I'm not going to let you go there. Back to Willis. Back to Gustin. Yeah, good ball movement here by Central. Being patient. Strout to the hoop. It's good. Nice move. Two for Hayden Strout. Six to six. And the teams go back and forth here early. In the lane there. Got it to Ty Cobb. Now to Gaw. He got stripped, but it went out of bounds on Central. Nice job by uh, Gustin, man. Nice offensive start for both teams in this game, Mark. Patient, not, uh, not rushing anything. It's running their half-court offense. Both teams, uh, both teams are playing man-to-man -man here. Chad Bourne with it. Cut off there. Back out to Gaw. He's going to put up a three. That's no good. Gustin tries to battle for the rebound. It comes away to Strout, and he's going to be fouled by Chadbourne. In that, you know, as a coach, that's not something you want to see a foul, especially from one of the key players that far from the basket. Well, that's three fouls already on the Pirates. Red Devils haven't committed any yet. 425 left first quarter. Tied up at six. Have my best to look around the official here on this side. Nice Strout pass. looks inside to Gustin. Up. Oh. Oh, wow, oh, so they're going to call a foul on Chadbourne. That's the second foul. No, that was wasn't that on. No, that oh, was on okay. Cobb. Okay, okay, Cobb. Okay, that's the fourth foul on the Pirates already, and we're only not even four minutes in. But central to the bonus early if they uh, keep that up. And uh, Central's taking advantage. Uh, five for five on the line. The first one other than Pollock there. Twelve black push white. So on the miss, on the miss, there's a foul there on uh, Strout. First foul on the Red Devils. So five for six start from the free throw line. Five out of their seven points have come to the line already. And here comes Gaw and the Pirates. Higgins looks in. Chad Borden's got it now. He's going to look to Cobb. He puts it up and in. 
Ty Cobb with two for PCHS. They push back in front by a point. Jackson Pollock with it, guarded closely by Gaw. Oh, to Stroud, he's going to lose it out of bounds. Kind of an unforced turnover there, I just dropped it out of bounds. And Noah Kane checking in for the Pirates for see, Ty Cobb. See, Noah Kane, in the games we've done, has done excellent off the bench for Coach Noyes. Um, he's only a freshman also, but you know he can make a lot of things happen. He did the other night against Dexter, in a game that they were in until early in the third quarter. They played very well, especially in the first half. Chadbourne's going to take a jumper. He's going to miss it. See, there he goes Kane. Kane got the rebound and forced the jump ball, and I believe the possession's going to stay with the Pirates. Yeah, he just he comes in and makes, it makes things happen right away. Central kind of has one of those players off the bench who's a senior, Benjamin Speed, that usually does a good job for them off the bench. Haven't seen him yet. Haven't seen any subs yet for the Red Devils. Go with it. Trying to go in the lane on Pollock, and I think he probably he did. Turn over there. So 8-7 here, so. Yeah, good back and forth so far with these two teams. Pollock goes in the lane, puts it up and in. Jackson Pollock's up to six points for the Red Devils. First field goal. If yeah, he had four from the line before that. Four for four from the line. Kane with it. And Chadbourne looks inside, but Gustin takes it away. Looks like somebody was supposed to cut there and didn't cut. Yeah, miscommunication. Yeah, There's a three-pointer there. And uh, Pollock. Filling it up is Jackson Pollock. Nine points already. Nine out of the 12. Chadbourne to the basket. No good. Kane with the offensive rebound. He went up no good. Ball's knocked out of bounds by the Red Devils. Stay with the Pirates. Here comes that Benjamin Speed that I mentioned for the Red Devils. Does a good, good job for them off the bench. He's going to come in for Willis. Senior. Mostly known, I think it's, it's I might be his first year playing basketball. He's mostly known for baseball, I believe. So coach of uh, pe the central baseball coach, Peter Speed. Oh, nice move there. Ben Higgins with the basket. 12 to 10. Has a takeaway there by the Pirates. Dawson Simpson's got it. We're going to take a timeout, though. Going to go ahead and take a commercial. We'll be right back with you on East Main Sports Media. Rouse Garage in Dover Foxtrot to discover the difference between walking into a local dealership versus a big dealer that uses high pressure tactics the second you drive onto the lot. From selling you a vehicle to servicing your vehicle, Rouse Garage will treat you like you are the only customer. While you're there, check out their state of the art automatic car wash. Rouse Garage, call them at 207 564 3434 or visit them at 191 East Main Street in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. Back after the timeout. Pirates have the ball. Down by two. Minute 45 left in the first quarter. It's 12 to 10, Red Devils. Here's a three pointer up and good by Gaw. So he's been the offense on the PCHS side, and uh, uh, Pollock has been on the central side. Yeah, Gaw's got seven, and uh, Pollock's got nine. Dustin wants to go in the lane, and it was either going to be a charge or a travel, and they're going to call a travel. Looks like he pushed off there on his defender. Ball back to the Pirates. Just what we kind of expected, Chris. Yeah, good game. Another, another nice shot there by Gaw. Call that a two. Must have been a deep two. Yeah, right inside the line. I couldn't tell from here, though. They have a better angle than us, for sure. Yes, they do. Yep, travel there on Pollock. Gabe Sartoma is in the game for the first time. It's going to replace Dawson Simpson. Minute five to go in the first quarter. Yeah, just what we expected. We, these teams are pretty evenly matched, if you look at it. Yeah, and, uh, definitely. And, uh, you know, as we mentioned, it's an important game. 
Well, PCHS is right in the tournament right now, but they're going to need some more wins. Nice move. Nice shot there by Ben Higgins. He's up to six. So between him and Gaw, they've got 15 of the 17 for the Pirates. Shot there is good. Off the bench, as you said. Yeah, Benjamin, Benjamin Speed. Speed. A lot of offense here. Let's see if PCHS goes for the last shot here. They might. They'll, uh, Central doesn't seem to be forcing the issue, so. 15 seconds. Definitely working for the last shot. Want to try to get a good shot here, though. Five seconds. God's going to put it up. No good. Rebound grabbed by Central, and that's going to end the first quarter. 17 to 15, PCHS. Right back with you on Eastern Main Sports Media. Sluggers Baseball and Softball Training offers a variety of classes and leagues to expose you to a wider view of the game. Sluggers leads the way in baseball and softball training with industry-leading technology such as hit tracks that combines a traditional batting cage experience with modern analytics, all from the virtual diamond of your favorite ballpark. Check out Sluggers today on Facebook, schedule online, or call 207-951-2250 to start your journey with the best training staff around. Excellence starts at Sluggers. And stop by Kimball Insurance for all your insurance needs. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or health insurance, we have you covered. Our agents are ready to serve you and help you with your needs. Visit us at Kimball Insurance at 91 Main Street in Sangerville, Maine. Online at Kimball Insurance Agency. Right back with you here. Central with the first possession of the second quarter. And there's a shot in the corner for three there for the Red Devils. And that's number 30, Ethan Ladd, just off the bench. So, so they the Red Devils, yeah. Good, good protection off the bench already. Yeah, a couple three-pointers off the bench. One by Speed and one there. There's a jumper there by number 20 for the Pirates, and that was Noah Kane. Pirates push right back ahead by one after the Red Devils taking the lead. Peyton Strout with it. He looks inside to Gustin. He wants to go up and in. Nice move there by Lucas Gustin. 20 to 19, Red Devils. A lot of offense, but it's going to be who steps up defensively who's going to win this game. Looking for Soctoma there, and he lost control of it. Gustin got it. Gets it to Ladd, and he traveled. So, a few on-force turnovers for the Red Devils, but overall, both teams have done a pretty good job. Pirates trying to take the lead again. Shot up no good. Rebound up and good there. I believe that was Higgins. That was Higgins and uh, can call that a pass, right? <laughs> Got the assist. L yeah. -U. yeah, Higgins is up to eight points now. I want to go into Gustin, but Chadbourne says, no, I'll take that. He's going to go to the basket and lay it up and in. Nice steal and two there by Chadbourne and Coach Lancaster wants a timeout. We're going to go ahead and keep it right here, and we're going to tell you about those sponsors that sponsor these broadcasts and keep them free for everybody to watch. Black Bear Crane is a family-owned and operated crane and rigging service provider located in Herman, covering the state of Maine. With cranes from 27 to 240 tons, from root trusses, HVAC units, steel, and precast direction, the modular home and communications equipment, call 977-BEAR today. If you need a vehicle, contact Sonny, Sean, Brian, or Ryan at Hartley's. Easy financing available and a great selection of new and used. Call 207-368-5751. Right back to action here, Mark, and a uh, fairly uh, good job on the offensive end by both teams here so far. Yeah, and as I mentioned, though, uh, I think it's going to be whoever steps up defensively who's going to end up getting the win tonight. Bryce Caddix also in for the Red Devils, number 10. And number 32, Justin Butler, is also in. Butler's going to go right up and in. And he heard me talk, say his name and said, I'll take that and put it up off the glass. Again, I, I, I'm not sure either coach is really pleased with the defense, though. There's another 
Two-pointer there by Noah King. 25-22. Back and forth these teams go. Now, and I don't think the coaches would say they're very happy with on the defensive end, either coach right now. So it's another foul there. That's going to go on Higgins, I believe. It's going to be two on Higgins. It's going to be five on the Pirates. And that is number 11, Roland Willis, at the line for the Red Devils, who have done a real good job at the foul line so far. And one thing that Coach Lancaster has to be happy about, though, is seven different scorers. That will get the job done most of the time. Right now they're trailing by one, though. Dawson Simpson's checked back in for the Pirates as well. I believe he replaced Kane, I believe. And... Gage Tracy's also. Gage in. Tracy, yeah, I was just going to say that. I was trying to see the number there. Getting the action on the far end of the court. It's a little ways away from us. Up and in there by Chad Bourne. Trying to see the number there. Getting the action on the far end of the court. It's a little ways away from us. Up and in there by. Underneath, and there's another basket on the other end. And that's the second basket for Justin Butler this quarter. The replays you've seen have been brought to you by Maine Mapping Company. We want to thank them for their sponsorship of this broadcast. I believe it was a foul on Central there. Number 10 committed the foul. It was Bryce Caddix. His first, second on the Red Devils. Trade places the same game, Chris. Yeah, I'm going to trade places and do the girls' game after. Mark will be bringing you the play-by-play, and I'll do the color stuff. Soctoma goes up no good, and rebound came down to Willis. He wants to run. He's going to go in the lane, and he's going to get fouled. See, on that, uh, Chris, somebody's got to step up, you know, not let him get that, that close to the basket. Nobody stepped up defensively. It's going to be the second on Gaw as well. That's two on Gaw, two on Higgins. I wouldn't yeah. say a real big foul trouble, but you pick up a third before the half, and you could run into some trouble. Free throw shooting. They've really taken advantage of this. Eight, eight for nine right now. Yeah, very, very good job. Number 25 in for the Red Devils. That's Nate Cox as Willis hits the second one. So 28-27 now. The Red Devils have pushed back in front by a point. I believe the biggest lead of the game has been three points by either team. It's been pretty tight so far. It has, but even teams, as you said. Oh, that's going to be a turnover backcourt. So, yeah, I, th I believe you're right. I think PCHS is six fouls. So Central's in the one on one the rest of this uh, half. Over four minutes left. Yeah, that could be big, especially the way the Red Devils are shoot, getting to the basket and shooting foul shots. Here's a shot by Pollock for three. No good. Yeah, 32. We're going to get in central. That's going to be a foul on Justin Butler. It's going to be a third on the team there. We're going to get uh, Ty Cobb coming back in, but the Pirates going to replace uh, uh, Gabe Soctoma. Gage. Gage Soctoma. Gabe. I got that right? Gabe? Gabe. Gabe. We got a Gabe and a Gage, yes, right? Yeah, okay, all right. I'll get that straight. Oh, nice pass. Good ball movement here by the Pirates. Chadboard's trying to get in the lane. He's going to pull up. No good. Justin Butler came down with the rebound for the Red Devils. And I believe that's going to be a travel. Yep. Looks like there could have been some contact, but they're going to call the foul. Uh, they're going to call the travel before the foul there. I think Coach Lancaster agreed with that, but Pirates back with it now. Here's Gaw. Outside to Chad Bourne. Looking underneath the Gaw. No room there, though. You saw, I'll pull it out. Nail a three. Plenty of room there. 12 points for Brady Gaw. 12 between him, uh, 20 points between him and Higgins so far. No good there. Rebound by Butler, up no good, and he's gonna foul trying to get the rebound. Chadbourne 
called that one down. Yeah, good job by uh, Chad one there on the rebounding effort. It's going to be the second foul on Butler. Going to have some subs coming in for the Red Devils. Gustin's back in. Hayden Strout's back in. And Colby Bean back in. And I believe that's Noah Kane checking back in for the Pirates for uh, Gage Tracy. Yeah, we mentioned the effects that Kane has, and I mean, not necessarily on the points, although he has four tonight, but he does a lot on the rebound and defensive side of things. He certainly does. Missed Looking underneath there, and I think uh, Chadborn got held. They're going to get the foul on Colby Bean. One way from keeping, getting the ball to him, right? Yeah, hold him, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be one way to do it. I think they uh, up to five now. So I think they are, yeah. I think that's three fouls in a row by the Red Devils. Ooh, uh, Cobb was open. Nobody saw him underneath the basket. Chadbourne, he wants to go in the paint. Gives it out to Gaw. He puts up another three. No good. Rebound by Willis. He wants to go in the lane. Up. Oh, beautiful move. Nice two points there by Roland Willis. You know, I keep talking about the defense, but nobody, you know, stepped up defensively. And that's it. You know, Coach Noyes has to, has to be an emphasis at halftime. Yeah, he had uh, made the move down the lane. Nobody stepped up. Chadbourne wants to. No. Hayden Strout with the rebound. Oh, pass, pass. Beautiful pass. Chadbourne wants to. No. It was Colby Hayden Bean Strout with the rebound. Two there for the Red Devils. Oh, pass. Beautiful pass. pass. Hayden Strout, that was a beautiful pass. Beautiful pass there by Hayden Strout. Colby Bean. Got to get another foul on the Red Devils. We get Willis this time. Good thing for them is uh, really not a lot of, like, um, a Butler has two, but other than that, everybody has one, so no serious foul trouble on that and yet yeah, but both teams have six so the next foul on either team is going to put them in the one and one Gaw nope Willis with the rebound Willis solid player for the Red Devils as well uh, you can hear Coach Noyes not happy with the defense nice that play didn't there get, didn't really Colby get any Bean. better there certainly didn't Colby Bean Kind of alone under the basket, put it up and in, and the Red Devils have a four-point lead, and I think that's the biggest lead for them on the game. Chadbourne. Nice move there. Nope, Didn't no finish, good. But Gustin with the rebound. I can tell you, even though they lost by 27 to Dexter, they did not play defense like this. <laughs> play, they played very well defensively. Off the side of the basket, um, Dawson Simpson had come down with it, and now the Pirates control it. Brady Gaw, and that was not a good foul by Jackson Pollock because that puts them in the one and one. And that's, yeah, definitely not what Coach Lincaster wants to see a foul that far from the basket. Especially when you only got a minute 15 left and you're gonna commit the foul before Gar even got the ball across half court. So Gar's gonna get a one and one here. And he got the first one to roll through. He's in the top 10 in the PVC uh, Class CD um, uh, free throw shooting, so that's who Coach Noyes probably like to have at the line. That's their first free throw. Rebound. Chadbourne had it, and then Gustin took it away, and then Chadbourne committed the foul. So Chadbourne's got two. We've got three players now on the Pirates with three fouls. Sorry, two fouls. Yeah, the... Uh, Gabe Soctoma's going to come in. He might re be replacing uh, Chadbourne. He is. I don't... I think you want him picking up his third foul here before the half. Yeah, they're definitely protecting uh, getting his third. Lucas Gustin at the line for the one-on-one -on -one for the Red Devils. Uh, it's a mess, but the rebound by Colby Bean. Up and in. Bean has done a nice Bean job. Bean has done a nice job, yep. Yep. Six points for Colby Bean. He's one of the guys I did mention in the pregame show. He's just a sophomore. Young Red Devils team, they have... Um, they have eight underclassmen, so um, definitely looking bright for the future for the Red Devils. Yeah, I think uh, travel there, but I think this is definitely uh, two teams that you're going to see improve because uh, PCHS, they had two leading scorers Gar, uh, for the season, Gar and, uh, and Chadbone. Gar's a freshman, Chadbone's a junior, so yep. um, so that's a, a big uh, thing there. They got plenty coming back. And ben Higgins is only a junior also. 
Yeah, solid nucleus there coming back for the Pirates. Nice play there by Simpson. But they ain't worried about next year right now. No, no. They uh -huh. definitely <laughs> definitely both have enough heel point, you know, game left to get into the tournament. PCHS would be there if the season ended today. I believe the top three get a bye, I believe, right? Class C. Yeah. 13 Kobe Bean, it. nice play. Kobe Bean, fourth under the basket for the Red Devils. He's got eight this quarter. And the Red Devils have extended their lead to seven, Mark. Yeah, they have. Pirates seen a basket here before half. Stop the, uh, stop the uh, Red Devils' momentum. Maybe going to the locker room. Yeah, they should be taking a last shot if they can. Daw wants to take it. He goes behind the back in the lane. Up, oh, no good. Colby Bean came down with a rebound, but what a move by Daw. And that shot's not going to count. It's too late. Uh, beautiful move there. And 38 to 31 is where we stand. Red Devils at the half. We're going to take a timeout, and we'll be back with you on Eastern Main Sports Media. And stop by Kimball Insurance for all your insurance needs. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or health insurance, we have you covered. Our agents are ready to serve you and help you with your needs. Visit us at Kimball Insurance at 91 Main Street in St. Gabriel, Maine, online at KimballInsuranceAgency.com, or visit us on Facebook to see what we can do for you. Kimball's, your insurance is our business. To Rouse Garage in Dover Foxtrot to discover the difference between walking into a local dealership versus a big dealer that uses high pressure tactics the second you drive onto the lot. From selling you a vehicle to servicing your vehicle, Rouse Garage will treat you like you are the only customer. While you're there, check out their state of the art automatic car wash. Rouse Garage, call them at 207 564 3434 or visit them at 191 East Main Street in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. Brothers Meats is a family-owned and operated business located in Guilford, Maine. We operate a local retail meat market along with a slaughterhouse, smokehouse, and processing plants. Herring Brothers has all sorts of meats from already pre-cut all the way to cutting it right on the spot for you. Also, while you're there, don't forget to try their wicked good beef jerky that is made right in Guilford, Maine. Call them at 207-876-4395 or visit them at 346 Water Street Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Folks, let's get started. Parents, thanks for coming. As many of you know, I'm Coach Mather. Tonight I want to talk about the season, of which I only have one expectation, that everybody gets stronger. When I say get stronger, I'm not referring solely to physical strength. Sure, we'll be in the weight room, we'll be running stairs, but we're also going to focus on developing mental toughness and grit because those are the characteristics that allow us to achieve greatness both on and off the court. So how do we develop those things? By getting comfortable with a challenge, by cultivating the confidence necessary to overcome adversity in all forms. That's why I coach. That's my purpose. Every member of this team can lean on me and I'll teach them how they can lean on themselves and each other. This message presented by the MPA and the Maine Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. We are the NFHS. That stands for the National Federation of State High School Associations. But really, what we stand for, together with the MPA, are the 49,000 high school sports and performing arts students in Maine. And so we stand. We stand for the runners, debate team members, and basketball players. We stand for their coaches, officials, and adjudicators. We stand for the drummers, football players, and actors. We stand for the golfers, singers, and swimmers. We stand as the national leader and advocate for these essential activities and all who participate in them and make them possible. Because it is our purpose to ensure that high school students get to play, perform, and compete together. To learn more about who we are and what we stand for, visit nfhs.org. Slugger's Baseball and Softball Training offers a variety of classes and leagues to expose you to a wider view of the game. Slugger's leads the way in baseball and softball training with industry-leading technology such as hit tracks that combines a traditional batting cage experience with modern analytics all from the virtual diamond of your favorite ballpark. Check out Slugger's today on Facebook, schedule online, or call 207-951-2250 to start your journey with the best training staff around. Excellence starts at Slugger's. 
<laughs> Welcome back. Uh, um, we've got Coach Jessica Bell of the uh, PCHS girls team uh, with us um, right now. Um, we just want to talk not about necessarily this game tonight or how you've been doing, but about your seniors, um, the senior night here at, at PCHS. And um, Maybe we just go down, maybe you can say like a, a brief thing about each one of them. We'll start with uh, Kendall Kimball and uh, what she's meant to the team and, and the program and, and, and you. So Kendall's our senior captain. She's our only captain. She's a phenomenal person inside and out, on the floor, off the floor. Uh, she's in a ton of school clubs, everything. She's already got accepted to a bunch of colleges. As far as the team goes, she's a true leader. Um, she expects a lot from herself and also from our team. She's a great, great kiddo to have on the floor. Um, we'll start, uh, Abby Ricca. Abby, <laughs> Abby's a beast. Um, mm. Poor Abby's been playing with a lot of injuries this year. Um, she can shoot. A lot. She drives to the hole. Um, she's improved her game a lot. Yeah, and her twin sister, Briley. Yes, Briley's also a beast defensively. Uh, she loves to play defense, and she hustles a lot. We love to have them. Um, Caitlin White. Kate. So Kate has come up with me um, from middle school as well, and she hasn't got as much playing time, I think, as she hoped this year, but when she does go on the floor, she leaves it all on the floor. Um, your foreign exchange room, uh, uh, Maria me hopefully I'm saying <laughs> yes you did <laughs> Maria's awesome uh, she's never played basketball in her life before and so we're hoping to get her some minutes today but she's been to every practice and every game and comes and cheers us on um, hopefully she does well when she gets on the floor I know she's really nervous but she's been awesome to have um, being a first year coach with this group of seniors um, have they provided the kind of good leadership for you for you and the team yeah, I'd like to, yeah, Kendall has been amazing as a captain. Um, it w has been tricky for me. We went from their middle school coach to being friends and now back to being a coach again. So that's been a little tricky, but we've handled it well, I think, and they've done a good job. Excellent. Well, thanks for joining us. We yeah, of course. We on the seniors if, if we didn't get a chance later, so we wanted to make sure. We awesome. Well, out. thank you, guys. Thank you. That's Coach Jessica Bell. Uh, uh, Chris Lesson back here, join, back here joining me um, now. And I uh, um, just wanted to touch on the uh, seniors there, Chris. Yeah, it's a big night for them. And uh, geez, a big night for that uh, foreign exchange student who's never played basketball before. That's that's something. And uh, like Coach Bell said, hopefully she'll be able to put her in for a few minutes tonight. She's very nervous, but uh, hopefully she does a good job when she gets in there. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, it's a you know, good night to get, you know, some – I mean, most of those seniors, um, you know, three of them start anyway. Um, Kendall Kimball, Abby Ricker, and Riley Ricker. But, you know, get, good to get them, um, you know, a little bit more playing time than usual. And uh, um, they'll get that tonight. Yeah, and something interesting I saw interesting I saw here at halftime, I think coaches went to the locker room to talk. But um, Coach Noyes kind of left his team out here. I don't think he had much to they weren't in there long. They, they, were, they were in there for a minute. A minute, yeah. yeah. They, they weren't in there very long. Um, I think it's pretty easy to get the point across what they need to do, and they, that is to play defense. Because as I mentioned, um, they lost big the other night to Dexter, but they did not play like this. They played good defense, and that obviously a tough Dexter team, and they lost big, but they they played a tough tough defense. So they, I mean, they gave gave up 69 points, but when you, you get Will Kuznia's put in 20, dunking it twice, you know that's not a not an easy matchup. Um, tonight has just been a lot of open layups, and and you know you don't want to see that as a coach and and or you know as a, a team because that's you know kind of. You know, but they're, they're still very much in this game. Though. They're you know they're only down, only by, down by seven, seven. and and, and it, it seems like it's something that PCHS hasn't done much this year because you know they're only averaging giving up fifty points a game. They gave up thirty eight um, in the first half, twenty three points um, in the second quarter by Central. Yeah, and that's um, definitely something that, that they're going to be focused on. I don't I I have a feeling you're not going to see as many wide open layups <laughs> you know this this half but you know we'll we'll see and get, give credit to central too they've taken advantage um and and one and two what do you got three four five six seven eight different scorers for a set for central that's pretty good and and you know that you're gonna get a lot of wins and score a lot of points you get that many people in the scoring call and nine for 11 from the foul line yeah. will also help <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they've limited the pirates to two attempts yes yeah, so, so pghs has only shot twice they've only got um five players in the scoring column. Uh, Gaw leads the way with thir 13, Ben Higgins with eight. Um, you know, Scott, Scott Chadbone only has four. Look for him to um, be kind of a focus offensively because um, him and Gaw are the two leading scorers, and, you know, I think um, that'd be a, offensively, that's kind of where they're going to look in the second half. Yeah, and I had uh, Pollock down for nine points in the first quarter for Central. He's got nine overall, and uh, Colby Bean had eight points in that second quarter. And Roland Willis also put in six in that second quarter for Central. Again, they scored 23 points in that second quarter. So that was a big, big quarter for the Red Devils. But again, 
like we talked about, a lot of those shots were wide open layups, Mark. Yes, they were, but um, you know, that's, I, we don't have the shooting percentages, but I, I bet Central's shooting a pretty high percentage. I bet they're probably shooting over 50%, yes. probably in that first half, yeah. yeah. I would say that definitely, and uh, we get ready here for the second half again. It was a very short um, conversation in the locker room before Coach Noyes brought his team back out here, so I think he might have uh, just got his point across real quick and uh, let the guys come back out here and uh, talk about it and warm up and get ready for yeah. the second half. Yep, so, um, you know, uh, um, over scoring real quick for the PCHS, 13 for Gaw, 8 for Higgins, 4 for Kane and Chadbourne, and 2 for Cobb. Um, the other side, we got Pollock, Pollock 9, uh, Beam 8, uh, 6 for Willis, and we've got 3 for Gustin and Speed, and 2, two for uh, Hayden Stroke. Four, yep. for, 4 for Butler and 3 for Ladd. Yep. Yeah, I was just going to say, four, 4 for Butler and uh, 3 for Ladd. Scoreboard went off. Yeah, scoreboard then went out. Oh, we're back. Yep. Back. No, zero, no, zero. zero. <laughs> I can tell so them it's 38-31. We got yeah, it on our scoreboard. If, if they need help, they can come over and ask <laughs> us. We'll tell them what the score is. I think they got there you go. team uh, 31 bookkeepers from each team anyway, so they should be able to get the score right. There we go. Yeah, I think we're ready 31. now. 31. Pirates going to get the first possession. Same starting five for both teams starting the second half. And we'll see if the Pirates can... Uh, Turn up the defense a little bit more. First, they're going to start on offense. Yes, Pass here. Save. Good, good save by Cobb. Very nice save. Back out front. Get it over to Higgins. He tried to go and couldn't. Back to the top to Goff a three. That's good. Brady Goff picks up right where he left off. Start the second half. And quickly, Coach Lancaster wants a 30-second timeout. Probably, uh, I mean, what could Coach Lancaster be saying? Don't leave Gar open? <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's probably something he said in the locker room, and they, uh, um, obviously that didn't, you know, come come through. So we got to make sure they get the point across because, um, you know, he's got three three pointers and sixteen points, sixteen of the thirty four points. So so you kind of got to focus on stopping him. Let let some of the other guys uh, beat you. Yeah, exactly. If I mean, probably going to be part of you winning this game if you can slow down Gar some. Uh, haven't really been able to do it so far. Again, 16 points already for gone. Coach Lancaster didn't like that first three-pointer and called a quick timeout. Maybe now the Red Devils go. Maybe offense. we'll see, but maybe it could be some kind of, uh, you know, maybe we'll see, but maybe a box of one or something the next Defensive time. Defensive adjustment, mm -hmm. yeah, could be. Yeah, could be right. Jackson Pollock, he had a big first oh. quarter. He puts that up and in. Right. Jackson Pollock, he had a big first oh. quarter. So beautiful shot there. That was thank you to Ma Main Map and Company for that replay. And Dawson Simpson with the foul on that one, and Pollock completes the three-point play for the Red Devils. Boy, that was a that was quite that a was shot. That was an man. acrobatic shot there by by Pollock, who scores his first point since the first quarter. He's up to 12 now. Higgins wanted to go again, couldn't. They tried to go to Gaw, and that went off his fingertips and out of bounds back to Central. Yeah, I didn't. I'll check next time down. I didn't see what they were playing that time, but it seemed uh, a bit more. I didn't catch it either. We'll it's see it on the next time down, but it seemed like they were more focused on him. We'll check out that defense. Red Devils back to work here. Bean almost lost it. Gave it to Willis. Guarded by Higgins. Oh, beautiful pass, but cut off. Gaw got a piece of that one. Chadbourne took it, and then he got knocked down. That's going to be a foul on the Red Devils. Yeah, it's going to get Gustin on that one. That's his first foul. When the school board went off, the the fouls, they keep the neat thing up there. They keep the fouls up there, but they kind of went off on the, on the board up on this, when the school board went off. So Pollock is on him, but nice move there. No good. And ball got tipped around. And the ball's going to stay with the Pirates. That's going to go off the Red Devils. The Pirates fortunate to get that ball back. Chadborn with it. He looks to pass. Over to Higgins. 
Over to Gaw. Gaw with a jumper. No good. Offensive Cobb. rebound by Cobb. In the corner to Higgins. He's open. No good. Much better job on the rebound in the um, side this half. Three offensive rebounds in a row. They only had seven total rebounds in the first half. Put bump, but no call. Good Let's ball see. there. Nice job by Chadborn to get to that ball. He wants to go in and almost got it to go. And I think he nice job by Chadborn to get to that ball. He wants to go in and drawn two early early fouls here in this quarter on Gustin. Come in any in the first half. He's got two already this quarter. I think a lot of that too is going to the basket hard and getting to the foul line could be a lot of success here where the Pirates could see some success here in the second half. Definitely well, a lot more a lot more aggressive that some as we mentioned only seven total rebounds in the whole first half. They had three offensive rebounds just on that possession. Cross court to Willis. He wants to put up a three. It's no good and Dog got the rebound. Again a good start here to this quarter on the rebounding effort by the Pirates who were out rebounded 12 to 7 in that first half. Gonna get another red doubles foul. It's gonna be on Colby Bean. It's gonna be Bean second. Nobody with three yet, though. Yeah, you can definitely see here early on in the second half the adjustments, the more aggressiveness um, for the Pirates defensively and on rebound on the rebound side of things. Chad Bourne. out to Higgins. He almost traveled. Got it to Chad Bourne. Oh, underneath. Good. Beautiful pass. He almost traveled. Got it to Chad Bourne. Oh, underneath. Good. Beautiful pass. Offensive rebound up and in there by Gustin. Gustin with two for the Red Devils. But what a pass that was on that last possession by the yeah. by the Pirates. Chad, Chad Bourne, Bourne to Simpson. Dawson Simpson. Yep. Oh, with another three. He's had two threes this quarter, but it's the change of style is what getting Pirates back into this, like more aggressiveness, playing like they usually do, and um, you know that's getting back in rebounding and defensively. Yeah, Gaw's up to 19 now. Offensive rebound to Pollock. He scores. He's doing it on that side of things, that's for sure. He's up to 14 now for the Red Devils. Five in this quarter. Oh, foul there. They're going to get Gustin for his third foul. This quarter, and that's going to force Lancaster, Coach Lancaster, to go to the bench. Gonna put in uh, Justin Butler and Benjamin Speed coming in for Pollock and Gustin for the Red Devils. Quick three fouls on Gustin. That's kind of big. He plays big underneath for them. Certainly does. It's a big, big loss off him off the floor. We got five seconds here if they don't hurry. Going back court. To Simpson, to Gaw, back to Simpson. Off balance, no good. Offensive rebound. What a rebound by Cobb out to Chadbourne for three. That's short. Willis with the rebound. Cobb's doing excellent this half on the rebound side of things for the Pirates. Jump stop there, no good. Chadbourne with the rebound. Chadbourne has five rebounds. Up, no good. Another rebound. Up, no good. Another rebound by Cobb. Three-pointer by Gaw. What an effort by Cobb this quarter. He didn't have any rebounds in the first half. He, I have him down for five now. I mean, and most of them have been right there in the offensive, offensive rebound. I think I had Chadbourne for one on that, on that possession as well. Yeah. yeah, Chadbourne has six rebounds now. Cobb has five. And again, as a team, they only had seven the whole first half. Cobb, three throws up and good. They call that a shooter's touch. So, is that what they call that? Yeah. Is that what they call it back in your day? Yeah. This yeah. day, too. <laughs> this day. 2023. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Cobb makes both. We got a three-point game. Ball don't lie. 3.35 left third quarter. Red Devils lead's been sliced to three. They led by seven at the half. Well, thank you. That's I'm a good call. Go Pierre. Oh, we're going to get an offense? Yes. Team control? Yes. Yep. Yeah, that was a good call. Let me get Pollock coming in for Willis. I think Willis was called 
I think they got Willis on that last foul, yeah. did they not? Yeah, yeah. offensive foul on him. Yeah. That, again, and that's credit to the Pirates' defense. You wouldn't have seen that in the first half. Wouldn't have been close enough to him to, to get Yeah, you can tell the aggressiveness though by the Pirates. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed it right from their first time they had the ball this quarter. Up no good. Benjamin Speed came away with a rebound, and they're going to get Cobb, I believe. Nice rebound there by Benjamin Speed. Yeah, because if you... If you're going to lose, which they definitely still could this game, they're trailing by three, you want to do it because you got outworked and not because you didn't work hard enough on your side. Yeah, I think that halftime speech definitely uh, was heard by the Pirates, the way they've come out here in this third quarter. Pollock, he's had a big game for the Red Devils, and he traveled. It'd be a great finish in this one, Chris, I think. I think so. We got 3.05 left third quarter, and we got a three-point game. Kind of what we expected from these two teams, pretty evenly matched. That's deflected by Central. It's going to stay with the Pirates. And in comes King, checking out Cobb. Cobb, huge in this quarter with five rebounds for the Pirates. Yeah, he's definitely um, been a big influence in the keeping his team in the game. You got to hurry again. And get a Chad Bourne wants to go on Colby Bean. Oh, Underneath, what a pass. Chad Bourne wants to go on Colby Bean. Oh, Dawson Underneath, what a pass. Another great pass set up from Chad Bourne to Simpson, the second one they've done this quarter. And there's a shot in the lane up and good by number 32 for the Red Devils. That's that's Butler for the, for the Red Devils with two. Again, they're not getting a clean look, though, like they were in the first half. There's definitely been a hand in the face of the Red Devil shooters this, this quarter. Chad Bourne puts up a jumper. That's going to roll in. What do they call that? Sir? That's a shooter's touch is what they call that. Mark Callman taught, taught me that tonight. <laughs> no, I've heard that before. But Central one-point lead. Strout. Nope. It's going to go off the rim and out of bounds. That's going to be some uh, PCHS ball. I know we keep popping on it, but it's <laughs> that defense is totally different than you saw the first 16 minutes of play. Yep, and uh, every player out there is, has uh, contributed in some way to that. Soctoma checked in uh, for Simpson. Simpson did a heck of a job set up by a couple nice passes by Chad Bourne to score. He's bumped there. Yep. Dustin's back in for Central. I don't know who they got no, on that foul. I think that was... Um, Colby Bean, maybe? Two, two. Well, Hayden Strout, I think. Strout, okay. Strout on that one. So they're already in the, they're already in the one and one with 152 left in the uh, in the. Uh, Again, that comes from the aggressiveness though of, of what we talked about at halftime, of what they needed to do to get back in this game, and they've certainly done it. We're now tied up. I believe that's the 20th point for uh, Gaw. Make that 21. And the Pirates have pushed back into the lead mark. Yeah, it's oh. a nice run here for them. Benjamin Speed, he was gonna, he wanted to fire that. He, he, ready, gets past half court, he's ready to fire it. Gonna get a travel here on Gustin. And that wasn't because of the defense, that was unforced. Yeah, 17 points so far by the uh, Pirates this quarter. 17 to seven run. Sorry, no, 17 to nine run to push in front. Chad Bourne looked and threw it out of bounds. Miscommunication there. Wanted to toss it back in the corner to Higgins and just a little bit off on that pass. On course turn over there by the Pirates. And Central's trying to get their lead back. They're going to go down to Gustin. Oh, He's Chad, no Chad Bourne got it from behind there. Yeah, Chad Bourne with a block. Soctoma's got it. Gets it to Gaw. So I was going to get it underneath the Sartoma, and Gustin just picked up a score foul. And now Sartoma will be going wide, you know, there. Again, as you said, Chris, though, it comes from their aggressiveness, um, forcing the fouls. They only got to the line two times in the first half, but that's because they didn't go to the basket. And now this will be attempt number seven and eight of this quarter. Well, seven at least. Sartoma missed the front end of the one and one. But seven, seven free throws this quarter compared to two in the first half. <laughs> so you tell the difference right away. Up and good by Gustin. Nice move by Gustin there. They needed that. Yeah, they certainly did. They're back up by a point. Chad Bourne wants to go. 
He's got four, Gustin's got four fouls now, so they kind of want to try to go at him if they can. Jackson Pollock with the rebound to the Red Devils. He wants to go in the lane, puts it up, partially deflected. They're going to say it went off his hand, though. And that's going to be uh, number 30, Ethan Ladd, coming into the Red Devils. He wants to get um, Gustin out of there right now. He's got four fouls. And, uh, again, another important piece. You can't afford to lose at this point for Central. Boy, this Brady guy, he's going to be a heck of a player, huh? Yeah, yeah, he's definitely um, powerful. Going to have great things for him the rest of the season, next three years after this. Chad Bowen. Lane opens up. He looks to pass. He's going to go in the corner. Three-pointer up and no good. Rebound. He came down to Ladd, and there's going to be a foul here on PCHS. Kane got the foul. Yep, number 20. So we got, I believe that says 11 seconds, does it not, Mark? 11.1. 11.1. I couldn't seven. tell if it was 11. <laughs> okay, 11.7. <laughs> couldn't tell if it was little, 17 or 11 from block, here. Little block, a little block from Pollock. He's going to have to go. Seven seconds, six seconds, five seconds. He wants three. Nope. Knocked around. Soctoma. Now Ben Speed's got it. He's going to put up a three at the buzzer. No good. And the Pirates end the quarter with a 49-48 lead. Come back for an exciting fourth quarter right after this. To Riles Garage in Dover Foxtrot to discover the difference between walking into a local dealership versus a big dealer that uses high pressure tactics the second you drive onto the lot. From selling you a vehicle to servicing your vehicle, Riles Garage will treat you like you are the only customer. While you're there, check out their state of the art automatic car wash. Riles Garage, call them at 207 564 3434 or visit them at 191 East Main Street in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. All across New England, business owners are finding new ways to succeed. Families are working hard to provide for their loved ones and their future. It's the spirit of New Englanders that inspires all of us to do more. It's in our employees, our customers, and our communities. Every day we do more. Because at Bangor Savings Bank, we truly believe you matter more. Back here for the fourth quarter. I believe I incorrectly said the uh, PCHS was ahead. It's actually central by one point beginning in the fourth quarter. So either way, close enough, right, Mark? One point game. Yeah. yeah. It's a good Underneath. game, definitely. Yeah. Ben Speed, Benjamin Speed's going to go up, and he's going to get fouled there. And Malene is going to get, I don't know who they're going to get. Yeah, not foul. 34, Chad, Chad Bourne, I Chad believe. Bourne, yeah. So it says third. Third, yeah. Third foul. Benjamin Speed's going to get a couple foul, foul shots here. First one's good. Central had 11 free throw attempts in the first half, and they only had one in the in the third quarter. So, <clears throat> still shooting very well as a team, though. Huh? Yes, they definitely are. Yep. I got them down 12 out of, I believe it's 12 out of 14 now from the foul line. Brady Gaw tried to. No, we lost control. Yes, foul. I think he might have gotten foul though. Yes. So Brady Gaw is going to be shooting. That's who the Pirates want shooting, I would think. That's three on Colby Bean. They're going to get a one and one here for Gaw. I have Gaw down for 21 points. That's correct. Double check my math. Check with you. You're keeping track too. So. Yeah, you are correct. They are six for, uh, Pirates are six for nine as a team. They only had two attempts, though, in the first half, so. <laughs> Definitely doing a better job getting, getting to the foul line and drawing these fouls even when they're not getting to the basket on the Red Devils, and on, now they're in the bonus, so. Two foul shots the rest of the way. Two big ones there. 51-50. Central by one. We are going to have quite the finish here in Guilford. Three-pointer there by Speed. Rebound Chadbourne. Eight rebounds for Chadbourne. The Pirates trying to take the lead back. To the top to Gaw, to Chadbourne. Looks into Soctoma. Chadbourne says, I'm going to take it myself. There was some contact there, but the ball went out of bounds off the Red Devils. Notice Chadbourne has really picked it up. Aggressiveness, 
most of his teammates had this half as well, but notice the difference in Chadbo in this half too. Yeah, Chadbo and Cobb mainly. No, nope, rebound. It's going to come down to Colby Dean for the Red Devils. Benjamin Speed up and in. Are you sure they, this is his first year playing basketball? He's uh, good. <laughs> I think so. I don't remember him being on the team last year. Nice move there by Gaw. And Gaw continues to pour it on. Pour on the points here. Got him down for a 25. Oh, oh beautiful. That's going to count. It's going to be an end one. Yeah, 25. Oh, oh beautiful. That was on Higgins. Yeah, and I got Pollock for 16 now. Tries the point number 17. Trying to extend the Red Devils lead to six, uh, sorry, four with this free throw. And he does. And I believe a timeout is being called. Good chance to tell you about some of our sponsors here. Black Bear Crane is a family-owned and operated crane and rigging service provider located in Herman, covering the state of Maine with cranes from 27 to 240 tons. From roof trusses, HVAC units, steel and precast direction, modular home, and communications equipment, call 977-BEAR today. If you need a vehicle, contact Sonny, Sean, Brian, or Ryan at Hartley's. Easy financing is available. Great selection of new and used. Call 207-368-5751. Our replay sponsor is Maine Mapping Company. They provide all your land, surveying, and mapping needs throughout the state of Maine. Centrally located in Dexter, Maine Mapping provides boundary, topographic, and aerial surveys, as well as construction survey services statewide. Visit us at www.mainemappingco.com or check us out on our Facebook page to get more information or request a quote. And maybe you can tell the folks how to sponsor or become a tournament sponsor, Mark. Yeah, contact me at eastermainsports at gmail.com. And uh, again, we're audio broadcasting of certain um, schools um, throughout the tournament. And uh, we hope to um, have you as a sponsor. I also want to mention, we got a new equipment that we didn't have, as you might have noticed, Friday we didn't have it. And Ames Chiropractic and uh, Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union aren't on there for the ads. I'll try to get them on by our next broadcast on Wednesday. Gaw three pointer up, no good. Rebound, Strout saved it in, but it's kept alive by PCHS. Gaw looks oh, nice. oh, beautiful. Gaw looks oh, nice. oh, beautiful. Another beautiful play there in the lane. That was Higgins with the basket. Red Double scored on the other end, and I missed who scored, so it was a two-pointer. I, I think it was Strout. But Strout, okay. Yeah, somebody will correct us if we're wrong, but it looks like him <laughs> coming down after the bat. <laughs> we did mention uh, Black Bear Crane. They, uh, we didn't get a chance to mention You probably saw it on the screen, but they were our halftime sponsor. We want to thank them, and Anthony and the guys from Black Bear Crane sponsoring that. For us, Chad Bourne's first free throw is up no good. He's one for three from the line. He's two for four now. 58 to 55. We got 540 left. Seems like a game that's going to come right down to the wire. Yeah. Sure does. Again, yeah, I don't remember Benjamin Speed being on this team last year. He, uh, but again, they were very a deep team, so there's going to be a lot of guys playing on this team that weren't playing on that team. He DB. could have been playing JV, you're right. He could have been. We're going to get a, num a foul there on uh, Dawson Simpson. You know what? I'm going to find out. Well, go ahead and find out. I'm, I know he's uh, mostly known for baseball. He's um, central coach Peter Speed's son. Um, started mostly on the baseball field. Um, I believe a catcher for the Red Devils. Shot first one was good by uh, Pollock. Let's get another one. Two big free throws there by Pollock. He's had a big night with the Red Devils. 19 points. 
Oh, nice, nice pass. pass. Ooh. Ooh. Gustin said no. <laughs> That's a, a big play with four fouls. That's a tough play. And Gustin got right in there. Definitely could have been could have could have been called for the foul on that one. There was a lot of body on that. It was a lot of ball too, though. A lot of times you get the ball, though they'll call the body contact. So Gustin got away with that one. Still PCHS ball though. Looking into Chadbourne. He fakes. Goes good up to good defense by the Red Devil. Ooh. Oh, steal there. Jackson call it. Good, good job by the Pirates getting back. That did not happen in the first half. Now they're going to need a big stop. Gustin. Oh, great shot there by Gustin. He hasn't done a lot on the offensive end, but that was a key basket right there, and the Red Devils are up by seven. Getting to critical time here for the Pirates offensively. I'm going to get a timeout here, and uh, we'll go ahead and take it, and we'll be right back with you on East Main Sports Media. Sluggers Baseball and Softball Training offers a variety of classes and leagues to expose you to a wider view of the game. Sluggers leads the way in baseball and softball training with industry-leading technology such as hit tracks that combines a traditional batting cage experience with modern analytics, all from the virtual diamond of your favorite ballpark. Check out Sluggers today on Facebook, schedule online, or call 207-951-2250 to start your journey with the best training staff around. Excellence starts at Sluggers. All across New England, business owners are finding new ways to succeed. Families are working hard to provide for their loved ones and their future. It's the spirit of New Englanders that inspires all of us to do more. It's in our employees, our customers, and our communities. Every day we do more. Because at Bangor Savings Bank, we truly believe you matter more. Back here at Guilford, and uh, Central's regained their seven-point halftime lead. The Pirates have done a good job of coming back, and now you're getting, starting to get the crunch time here for the Pirates, Mark. Certainly is. Each possession going to be important. You want to go through Gar and Chadbourne and see what happens. Now it's going to go off uh, Higgins trying to save it in bounds, and made a correction and not Benjamin Speed's first year playing because he had an injury last year so uh, correction sorry it's my fault just didn't remember Benjamin Speed being on the team he had an injury that I did not know about so thank you for that information here's uh, Central trying to increase oh, nice their block by God. yeah beautiful beautiful block that time nice pass oh Chad born for three Big shot there. Huge three-pointer for Chadbourne. Cuts it to a four-point game. They needed that. They needed that defensive play by Gar on that other end. They needed that big offensive play from Chadbourne on this end. Oh, another nice play there defensively. Step. We're going to get a timeout. I'm going to keep it right here. And uh, what PCHS has to do here. They're within four, Mark, and uh, what do they what do they got to do here in the last 329 to come out with a win? Well, the last couple stands, they've been playing good defense. God had a nice block down there, and um, Simpson stepped in and made a nice play. Um, Chadbourne's done a good job defensively, and, uh, you know, they, they, they're making the plays defensively. They just need to stay with it defensively, keep playing hard, and, um, you know, and they can give themselves a chance. Offensively, they've got the weapons. God, we've seen God all night, 25 points. Um, Chadbourne is now in double figures with 11. Um, and uh, they also have Hig Higgins with 10. Exactly what we said they needed to do offensively. They're doing that. Now they need a couple defensive stops to give their offense a chance to get them back even closer. This is uh, also the part of the game where we need to we'll start thinking about, still a ways to go, 329, but start thinking about our Bangor Savings Bank player of the game. One, oh. of the, one, of, one, one player from one of these teams is going to get a $10 uh, prepaid gift card to use wherever they want, Visa. Thank you to Bangor Savings Bank for that sponsor. Underneath Gustin, that's big, good. Big play there for Gustin. He's made a couple of big plays here. And Certainly has. And living on the edge here with four fouls. Three-pointer for Gaw. That's good. You need a big basket? 
Get the ball in the hands of Brady Gaw. He cuts it to three. Huge shots by Chad Bourne and Gaw these last two possessions. Dustin said, I'm going to try to do the same again. He didn't that time. Good box out by Cobb. Cobb has six rebounds in all of them this half. Chad Bourne wants. Oh, that might have been a two. He might have been on the line. Oh, good hustle by Simpson. Rebound by Simpson. Gets it to Chad Bourne. Out to Gaw. Three seconds, yep, they're going to get Cobb for three seconds that time. Oh, yeah, definitely um, doing a good job on that offensive re on that offensive glass this half the Pirates have and they need to come up with another stop here still 225 left down by three Pollock Gustin oh, offensive yeah. rebound up and good he has come up big has Lucas Gustin it's been a little while and he's it's been a little while he said that for a while he said those four fouls, so kind of living on the edge on the defensive end or I don't want to pick up that fifth, but yeah, boy, he's he's come up big with some big baskets here for the Red Devils, especially these last couple of possessions. And they continue to shoot foul shots at an unbelievable pace here. Uh, what was that? Uh, six for six this, this uh, quarter, so 16 for 18 in the game. That's going to get you a lot of wins. So... Going to get a foul on Cobb in the rebounding action on the three-point attempt that was no good by Gaw. That's going to send the Red Devils to the line. Which has been a good thing for the Red that's Devils. <laughs> I was going to say, that's not a good thing for the Pirates. It's a great thing for the Red Devils if they can continue to hit them like they have. Hayden Stroud, I think these are his first attempts of the game. Oh, it's a one-on-one -on -one here. Yeah, one and one. That's a confusion whether it was a two shot or. Coach Norris made sure they knew. The lefty. It really doesn't matter who's shooting; they're gonna make him. So I, I, you know, <coughs> this is uh, as good as you can see a team shoot, you know, for a game. Yeah, especially yeah at this level, definitely. Oh, you jinxed it. <laughs> one out of two for Strout, so it's a seven point game and just. Two minutes remain. Chad Bourne with it and now gives it off to, who's got it now? Gaw, up and good. Brady Gaw. Thirty points for him. Thirty points, yeah, I was just gonna, starting to add these up and say, how many points does he have now? He's, that was point number 29 and 30 on that move. Underneath, nice by Bean, up, no good, but he's going to be fouled by Cobb. So Colby Bean's going to get two foul shots for the Red Devils. And, yeah, we're really at a point in, point in the game now. If, if you're PCHS, you're going to really have to hurry to try to put up some points here in a hurry, down by five with a minute and a half left. And especially the way, again, these Red Devils are, you know, they... Foul shots. If they hold on, it's going to be because of the foul shoot. shooting. Yeah. Yeah, they had a, the whole game. Yeah. Perfect on that one. Nothing but net. 70 to 63. Pirates need to go quick. Under a minute and a half left. And Chad Bourne turned it over, and Willis took it. Red Devils. If you're the Red Devils, you don't have to shoot. Make yeah. them foul you. Yeah, you're making them anyway. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So Chad Bourne forced to commit the foul there. 19 for 22 as well wow. uh, for the free throw line. So yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> that's uh, you don't see that at the high school level you too often. You see that at the NBA level nowadays. No, you don't. <laughs> no, no, you're right. Oh. Can't make them all. <laughs> Can't make them all. That one was not even close. But again, that where they won the game tonight. I think you look at that and be like, you know, it's really what won them the game ultimately if they hold on. Second one is good. So only four misses from the foul line all night for the Red Devils. Yeah, 20 for 24 now. They're going to need to probably get, oh, they, that's not what Central wanted. No, you, you don't want to foul and stop the clock with an eight-point lead. You need to force PCHS to make a shot, not a foul shot, because not only does it give them a chance to score, it gives them a chance to score with the time stopped on the clock. That's not what 
not what uh, Coach Lancaster wanted there. Let's see if uh, Pirates can take advantage. I mean, on most nights, their 10 for 14 would be quite impressive. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. It's just, you, know, you don't see these numbers in, at, at any level, really. It's uh, pretty impressive tonight between the two teams. And that one's no good. Colby Beam with the rebound. You're going to have to. Gonna have to foul if you're tired. Oh, I'll get a turnover. Steal. Chadbourne. Another foul. It's gonna be fouled by Follett. So now 59. Now Chadbourne's going to line for two. So not not what Central wants. Yeah, you know you don't want to stop the clock and uh, give them a chance. Chadbourne's a good free throw shooter. He's only two for four tonight. He has 11 points. I've got, he's got some stats though. Eight rebounds, five assists, and two steals, one block. And a patches in a pear tree <laughs> and one more foul shot. <laughs> Again, you're, you're, you're uh, scoring, though, here. Uh, you know, possibly if he makes the second one, you're scoring three points with not much time coming off the board. Yeah. So, 71-66. I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be right back with you. Brothers Meats is a family-owned and operated business located in Guilford, Maine. We operate a local retail meat market along with a slaughterhouse, smokehouse, and processing plants. Herring Brothers has all sorts of meats from already pre-cut all the way to cutting it right on the spot for you. Also, while you're there, don't forget to try their wicked good beef jerky that is made right in Guilford, Maine. Call them at 207-876-4395 or visit them at 346 Water Street Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. To Rouse Garage in Dover Fox Truck to discover the difference between walking into a local dealership versus a big dealer that uses high pressure tactics the second you drive onto the lot. From selling you a vehicle to servicing your vehicle, Rouse Garage will treat you like you are the only customer. While you're there, check out their state of the art automatic car wash. Rouse Garage, call them at 207 564 3434 or visit them at 191 East Main Street in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. Right back here to Guilford, 7166 Central. You're going to try to force a steal here, and if you can't, you're going to need a quick foul by the Pirates, and I think that's what they're going to do. They're going to have time to force a steal, but Red Devils move the ball around, and that's a travel on Gustin. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, well Even if you just stood there and did nothing, you know, you're forcing the Pirates to come up and at least foul you. Right. So, Gaw looks underneath, but that's oh. intercepted by Gustin. Fourth He's steal for Gustin. And the baseball pass up to Bean. He missed the layup. And Chadbourne got the rebound and got, got fouled. Wow. So now Chadbourne is going to be coming down here and shooting two. Could get this, this to a one possession game. So it uh, looks like uh, Bean might foul out. Looks like it. Benjamin Speed in for the Red Devils. That's good. Chadbourne with some big free throws here. This one could make it 71-68, and you still got 32 and a half seconds left. And he big, does. Big, big shots there. Three-point game. Try to trap if you're PCHS. Try to come up with a steal, and they couldn't. They pushed Willis. It's going to be a foul, but you still got to knock these down if you're central. Yeah, he is four for four from the line. This one got interesting in a hurry, Mark. It sure did. Never count a team out. A lot of things can happen, especially in a high school game. Big shot there by Willis. What's um, new? Them making a free throw. Yeah, <laughs> right? Big there puts it to a two possession game now. We missed that one. That, no, Rebound Gustin, that's his fifth. That was a big, not just because it was his fifth, but you, you stopping the clock again. Stopping the clock again and, and giving the, and the Pirates free throws. So Gustin fouls out. Justin Butler into the game for him. And two at the line for the Pirates. And that is Ty Cobb. Ty Cobb. And uh, he's two for two. It's a good, good name, Ty Cobb. Not the first good baseball time. player. Yeah, even though it's a few of his baseball games. Sure. 
He's going to need the second one here to bring it to a one possession game. It's the first one hit off the back rim. This is a big one. Big shot here. Nope. No good. Pollock with the rebound. He gets trapped. Then speed with it. Strout looks for Willis and he's going to go up for a layup. Good job there by Central breaking that pressure. Looked like PCHS was just trying to foul, and Central did a good job moving the ball down the floor and getting to the basket. Rebound by Strout, only five seconds left. Central's going to win this game. Speed's not even going to shoot it, and Central's going to come away with a 74-68 win over the PCHS Pirates. And we're going to go ahead and take a break, and uh, we'll be right back with you. All across New England, business owners are finding new ways to succeed. Families are working hard to provide for their loved ones and their future. It's the spirit of New Englanders that inspires all of us to do more. It's in our employees, our customers, and our communities. Every day we do more. Because at Bangor Savings Bank, we truly believe you matter more. Back here at PCHS after a big 74-68 win for the uh, Central Red Devils. Uh, second time beat PCHS in a week. Um, I got Lucas Gustin with me, and uh, you came up big despite being in foul trouble. I had you down for 15 points and seven rebounds. Um, what was the game plan there, in the, especially in the second half? Uh, come out with intensity and try to shut uh, Brady and um, Scott down. Yeah, and um, you know, I mean, Brady got his points, but you, um, you know, you kind of helped with everybody else, right? Yeah. And um, you know, they kind of seemed to step up the intensity in the second half. Um, you mashed it in the fourth quarter, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I, I said that at halftime that they were going to come out with a lot of intensity, and they certainly did. And um, you know, you had you down for eight points in the in that fourth fourth quarter. Um, did you? play any different with foul trouble not really not really um well congratulations uh, you know again that's a you know especially offensively that's a very good team and you, and you beat them twice twice in a week and you're a bangor savings bank play of the game you get this ten dollar gift card you can use it anywhere you want and um congratulations and uh you for, for winning that thank you and you could give it to coach Lan coach lancaster um coach congratulations on the on the win um now First half, you were able to do seem to be anything you wanted offensively. You'll get into the basket. <laughs> when say that? <laughs> well, you got a lot of layups. You got yeah. a, you got, you got a yeah. lot of lot of layups and and stuff, and you shot a high high percentage. Um, they came out with a different intensity in the second half. Did, during a timeout, did you have to kind of let them know we have to match their intensity? Absolutely. We we really didn't want these guys to hang around. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, defensively, that was our main focus the second half. Um, obviously, to try to deny. Um, number two and 34 of the ball. Yep. Um, and, and the biggest opportunity we have all year is just communicating. Mm -hmm. um, that's on us to make sure that we trust each other as far as defensively that we have support in the back end. Um, no, I've seen you guys early in the year. I've seen you now. You guys have made, you guys have made improvements uh, throughout the season. Is that what you're looking for, just to get, get better each day? I think it's the focus is about us. Um, we really haven't had that many guys who played varsity basketball last year. Mm -hmm. Um, this is my first year coaching. Um, it's all about fun. Life is harder. Basketball should be easy. Um, I just want these guys to go out there and compete um, and trust each other and play basketball. Yeah, I love that. I love that quote. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, and, and that's, that's very true. You know, you, yeah. you know, obviously there's a lot bigger things in, in life. You come mm -hmm. out here, you make the most of it, you work hard and, and, and play hard. And, and they certainly did, especially, um, you know, uh, Jackson and, and um, Lucas. You know, they definitely came up big. Um, Jackson got got you guys going and Lucas finished it off um you know just just talk about those two guys a little bit I think Jackson's unique his basketball IQ um sometimes I think we we hold him back mm -hmm. um by explaining different things throughout the game and throughout practice um he's a really really great player um the main folks with Jackson I just want him to be a, bit, a better teammate um move the ball um anything more than three sh three dribbles I want him to pass it mm -hmm. I'd rather him catch and shoot the ball no, and, and Lucas. Yes. Um, yeah. Lucas tough. I mean, it's tough. I mean, this is a senior year. I want to at least make sure he's having fun. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the one thing I tell him, it's all about, it's all about the seniors this year. We have six great guys. Um, and if they're not having fun, I'm not doing my job. 
Um, and just talk about your, um, got, I think, three games left in the regular season. Just talk about what you're looking for from your team in these last three games. The next three games is all about patience on the offensive end um, and just believe in ourselves. Um, it doesn't matter who we playing. Um, they have to put the shoes on just like we do. I really want these guys to have fun and play with confidence and just compete. The outcome, it is what it is. You know, if they give us effort in playing together, that's all I'm really asking for. Excellent. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate and, it. And congratulations on the win. Good luck the rest of the way. You're doing great stuff. I can see the improvement yep. in the team, so yep. congratulations. That's great to hear. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. That's Coach Lancaster after a big central Thank win um, this evening. We're going to take a short break, be back with you for pregame coverage for the girls' game on a different stream. Come back. Join us. We, this night's just getting underway. we got another big